Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Hey, 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 welcome to Family Church. We are in a brand new series starting today called Friends with Benefits. Is that all right? Friends with Benefits? Is that going too far? (laughs) Friends with Benefits, the idea behind Friends with Benefits is, does it benefit me to have friends? Do we need friends? What benefits does having friends bring to your life? Does anybody here have a best friend? Notice that not every hand in this room went up. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Do you guys remember a few weeks ago we were in a study on the armor of God? Yes? I want to I shift back to that for one second as we build out this idea of friends with benefits. One of the elements or one of the pieces of armor was the shield of <coughs> faith. Shield of faith. And I didn't have a month to do each piece of armor, which we could definitely have studied each piece for an entire month. We just did one a week. But there was an element, and there's something amazing about that shield of faith that I want to point out today. Has anybody ever seen the movie 300? And they came together to fight as what was called the shield wall. They they would come together, and they would have their shields together, and they created this impenetrable wall. Not only was the wall in the front, but the wall was on top. It is said that when these Romans built their shield wall correctly, that they could ride a horse and chariot across the top of it. That's how strong and powerful the shield wall was. But back in the day, they didn't have modern machinery that they could mass produce these weapons right? But they needed to mass produce them. They needed to pump them out really quick. So what they would do is they would make one standard set of shields and one standard set of swords, and they would just pump it out, pump it out, pump it out, pump it out. And in that day, it was all right-handed weapons, right-handed weapons. So your sword would be in your right hand, and your shield would would be on your left forearm. That's how you would fight. That's how you would go into battle. When they would produce this shield wall, they would come together. This is the amazing fact. This is where I'm getting to. That shield was not put in a position where the soldier protected himself with his own shield. The shield was put in a place that it protected the man to his side. His shield was in a position something like this, that the shield protected his brother. So his brother was like, so if my shield is this way, I can fight in between and and, and do what I need to do, but the shield protected my brother to the side of me. And I love that idea. I love that fact. And I want to ask you today, does your faith cover your brother and sister in the Lord? Are you covering your brother and sister in, lo- in the Lord in faith? Are you using your faith? See, because I was raised in the faith movement. I was raised in a word of faith kind of style church. And, and can I just be honest, transparent with you? A lot of it was self-serving. A lot of it was to like get rich and be wealthy and, and, and not be sick and me, 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 me. A lot of it was. Come on. But, but isn't it f- a funny fact that it is actually easier to have faith for someone else than it is yourself? Isn't it easier to lay hands on somebody and pray for their healing than it is for you to receive healing yourself? I mean, could it be that maybe it was designed that way? That maybe our faith was designed to help cover each other? And I'm going to cover you with faith, and I'm going to cover you with prayer. 
And, and this is what I love, is that when they took that faith and they set it in its proper place, it interlocked, it connected them to their brothers. It connected them in a solid wall that could not be broken. Do you help protect others around you? That is why we need, say need. need. We need godly, emotionally healthy friends around. Can we say that again? Emotionally healthy friends. Man, unhealthy emotional friends will drain you so fast. So fast. Every time they come over your house, it, you don't have fun, it's a counseling session. They come over your house and you're just hearing all the bad things about everybody. He said, all right, but what do you dream about? How can someone dream right now? COVID's coming back. I don't know how many times COVID can come back. This is why we're instructed in the Bible, if there be any sick among you, call for the elders of the church. Call for faith. Ask out. Hey, man, I'm sick right now, and I'm lacking the faith. I need someone else's faith interlocked with my faith. Help me out. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says this. Two are better than one because they have a good return of their labor. If either of them fall down, one can help the other up. Are we helping people up when they fall down? Dog, gone if the church doesn't love being the first one to post something bad about somebody. It sickens me. It sickens me, man. I watch the world care for each other better than the church does. Post some nasty Facebook comments about people who mess up. As if. Let me look through your internet history. Let me look at the algorithm that's on your Instagram and your TikTok. Come on, let me show, tell me what you ate for dinner last night. Tell if you ate too many calories. Come on, somebody. We're just talking about stuff that we got to get, we got to help each other out. We got to cover each other. Listen, I'm not saying cover up, but love covers a multitude of sin. We're not talking about covering it. We're talking about discretion. We're talking about prayer. I'm going to cover you in prayer. I'm going to cover you in faith. Jesus knew Judas would betray him and he never exposed him. But pity the fool. <laughs> pity the fool who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep each other warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And I should, I'm going to tell you this. It should be your life goal to get two solid friends. Two, shot, two solid friends, not just one. Because one friend on a bad day, you could talk each other into doing some bad stuff. Normally, it's not so that all three of y'all jacked up on the same day. <laughs> all right? I'm just saying. Pollister George Gallup, known for Gallup statistics, recently commented that Americans are among the loneliest people in the world. Statistic, Americans are the loneliest people in the world. And as they were surveyed, they kind of realized why they were the loneliest people. Amongst their busy lives, their overcommitted schedules, and congested cities, and, and, and being able to walk down the street and see 10,000 people sit in a room like this with several hundred people, we're still lonely. We're still lonely. We still have this question. We say, did anybody see me? Oh, yeah, we knew you were there. No, no, but did they see me? Did someone see me? Did someone connect with me? We, we have access to our friends' Facebook and our friends' list all day long, but do we reach out? We live in a sea of humanity but can still find ourselves lonely. 
Why? Here it is. We are not connected. Our shields are not interlocked. Our shields are not interlocked. I want to get through my day. I want to make sure that I'm happy. What about the soldier next to me? Yeah, but do you know how hard my life is and all the responsibilities that I have? Absolutely. Just as much as everybody else. We all got a wound. We all got a stab wound. We all got a scar. We all got it. But can your shield cover your neighbor? I want to take a look in a journey, the very first verse of the Bible. Does anybody know what the very first verse of the Bible is? Genesis 1, 1. Anybody know what it says? It's in the beginning. In the beginning. Once upon a time, before all began. In the beginning. Very first verse of the Bible. Genius, isn't it? In the beginning. In the beginning, who? God. This word God is the word Elohim, and you have to do that with your voice. If you don't, you didn't say it right. Elohim. Elohim. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty and formless mass cloaked in darkness, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. Elohim just means the word gods, G-O-D-S, gods. Um, it's the plurality of God, the plurality of God. So it's where we get the word for Godhead or Trinity. It literally just means that there was more than one like entity of God in the beginning. We know it to be the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God in three persons, three in one. Okay, Elohim. Another verse of the Bible that talks about the beginning, John 1, 1. Anybody know how it begins? In the beginning, the world already existed. He was with God. The word, I'm sorry. The word already existed. The word is Christ. He was with God and he was God. He was in the beginning with God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Life itself was in him. And this life gives light to everyone. I just want to point out these two verses in the beginning. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God what? In the beginning, God was never alone. In the beginning, God was never alone. In the beginning, God always had a three-stranded cord that could not easily be broken. In the beginning, God had community around himself. In the beginning, the word was connected to God. The word was interlocked with the Father. The Son and the Father and the Holy Spirit were interlocked. They had community. They had connection. The word was connected to God. Let me ask you who are you connected to? Who are you connected to? I heard it said that you are the sum of your five closest friends. The sum meaning the, you know, if it was a mathematical equation, five plus five, the sum is ten, right? So if you take, if you take your five friends, you're probably somewhere in the average of those five friends financially, emotionally, Spiritually, you're somewhere in there, somewhere in the average of your five closest friends. I'm going to tell you this, if you're the smartest person in the room, it's time to change rooms. Get around some smarter people. If you're the dumbest person in the room, stay where you are. <laughs> Hopefully a rub off on you. Jesus, just like the shield wall, interlocked and connected to the person next to him. The Bible says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, forever making intercession for us. He's interlocked with the Father. He's connected with what the Father is doing. The point that we need to understand 
is that there is something that preceded us. There was a design that preceded our design, and God's design was always community. This is why when God made Adam, he waited a little bit of a time. He made him, was like, man, this is good. Dag, we did a good job. It's good, good, it's good, it's good, it's good. And then he saw Adam kind of like walking around. There's two cows, there's two elephants, there's one me. And then Elohim said, it is not good. The first time that God ever said it's not good. He said, it is not good that man be alone. I will create a partner for him that they could commune together. They could commune together. The Trinity shows us that when there was only God, he was not alone. Oh, that's cool. When there was only God, in the beginning, God, he wasn't alone. He wasn't alone. He had community. Just so you know, God didn't make man because he was lonely. That wasn't the purpose. All right? So let's, let's talk about this. God is community. God is community. God is in community. I think most people agree that there's a great mind behind this universe. So maybe I'm going to talk to the person who's not like a, a, a Jesus fan or, or maybe you don't fully believe in the God, the Yahweh God, Jehovah God that we believe in. But you have to definitely agree that it could not have just been a big bang and accidentally ions came together and eons and microbials and accidentally the earth was created. I think that we have to understand that there was an intelligent design behind even how the human body would interlock to procreate. There was an intelligent design behind that. And, and I like this because the world is filled with such intricate design that we know there's a great mind behind everything. And we look at creation and how awesome it is, we immediately understand that there's a great mind behind its design. And that great mind and that great heart behind its design says we need to be in community. We need friends. God's a personal God. Let's look back. Before God gave the Israelites the law, he said to them pretty much, I don't want to give you the law. I don't want to give you the law. Before he gave them the law, before he gave them the Ten Commandments, they complained and he fed them. They complained and he gave them something to drink. They complained and he turned sour water sweet. They complained, he gave them a pillar of fire at night and a cloud by day. They said, Stop blessing us based on your goodness. Bless us based upon our ability to obey. He said, okay, I'm going to give you the law. He didn't want to do that. The law was cold. Stone is cold, impersonable. The day he gave them the law, 4,000 people died. Because he said, don't touch the mountain. And they did. That's not what God ever wanted to do. God never wanted to do that. He wanted to be their provider. The, the wilderness wasn't supposed to be like this horrible experience. It was supposed to be a vacation from slavery. Perspective. God is a personable God. Relationship and community are rooted in God. Community and relationship are rooted in God. Relationship and community existed before people were created. Listen, you're not making anything new by creating Facebook. You didn't create anything new by having Instagram and sharing stories across the internet. Before all that, God was. And he did. And he connected. Come on. Who do you think was behind the design of family? God made Adam and Eve. He said, man, procreate, fill the earth, have fun, love your kids. He created family. Who do you think's behind the design of the church and behind the design of cities and states and nations? All of these reflect 
the relational character of God. He even established Israel as a nation, a people, a community to bring them together to interlock faith and have authentic relationships. Man, I hate inauthentic relationships. I hate when I feel like I have to be the person you want me to be. I hate that. I hate that. Having to put a, a, a facade on to like act the right way. I, I mean, are we allowed to do this or not? I remember going to some pastor's conferences and I walk into the room and I got ripped jeans on and I got Nike sneakers on and a t-shirt and everybody's in suit and tie. And I'm like, these are not my people. I can't do that. I can't put that on and, 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 and pretend that that's me, that that's who I am. I can't, come on somebody, you know what that's like. You know what it's like when you just can't relax and, you're, and you're, you're gauging all your words to make sure that you say the right thing? Jesus said in Genesis 1.26, let us, as a group, as a community, let us make man in our image and let him reflect our nature, which means let us create a people who thrive in community. Studies show that 80% of men, when asked, said that they do not have a best friend. 80% of men, when asked, said they do not have a best friend. And, and now let me preface what a best friend is because a lot of us have acquaintances. A lot of us are popular at work. But a best friend is someone who has access to your stories, your struggles, and your secrets and will not expose you but lift you up and empower you to be the best version of you. Hey, a best friend is not always your ride or die that keeps getting you in trouble. We're talking the best friend that pulls you out of your crap and says, hey, brother, you're better than that. All of us need a lifeline, especially men. Men, we need a best friend who has access to the dark parts of our lives, that they're not ashamed of those things, but they're not impressed of our limelight either. I'm preaching some good stuff. We all need community. A lot of us bump into people in life. I went out to Lowe's yesterday to buy some things for my house and I bumped into a few people that I haven't seen in a while, people in the community, but like we didn't stand there and connect. We didn't stand there and have a moment. We didn't start a prayer meeting or talk about deep issues. It was like, yo, bro, what's up, man? Yo, great to see you. I haven't seen you forever. What's up? Are the kids good? Yeah, the kids are great. Man, they're getting big. Very shallow. 90% of our conversations are shallow. How's the weather? What about the Yankees? Are the Giants going to actually win a game this year? <laughs> we shake hands. We say hi. But a lot of us don't get into deep relationships. Many people today just want to be left alone. And like a year and a half of shutdown like exasperated that. We even lost more social skills that we were already bad at. Social anxiety is at an all-time high in America today. People, people literally, because of being shut down for so long, they get anxious having to have small talk. Like, what am I going to talk about? I don't know what to say. And so that it's like, can we just bring masks back? Because at least with the mask on, I didn't have to actually talk to anybody. They didn't really know who I was. I didn't get away with that because, like, everyone could see my two-tone beard under my mask. I got caught out there. But I want you to know this today. God designed all of us to connect, to know and be known in community, in community. Not only are we capable of it, but deep down inside of us, our soul desires it. Where 
do I belong? Now, I'm going to be very vulnerable with you. It's been a five-year mission of mine to find my people. Now, let me preface that. I have friends in church, great friends. But I'm talking about on the pastor side, on the church leader side. I don't really fit a lot of organizations, okay? Um, I don't fit in with a lot of people. And I, I put myself in every single, let me tell you, I put myself in every single network, in every room I could get into, I was in. I've been on stage with Joel Osteen. I've been in the rooms with the Hillsong guys. I've been in rooms with any big name. I've been in, in Ferdix room and all these other guys' rooms. Been there. And almost every time I'm like, maybe, but not really. I don't know. Like, my personality is very strong. Like, maybe you could take me for about 35 minutes right now. But then I was like, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> I saw this T-shirt that <laughs> completely, like, like, it states, like, my life, what I think about myself. It says, I'm not for everyone. <laughs> but with that mentality, that mindset, man, it's like, sometimes it's hard to find other pastors that want to, like, kind of do what I do and is as driven as I'm driven. And a few months ago, I went on a fishing trip with a bunch of, I have no idea who these guys were. I just got invited on a fishing trip, so I went. Bunch of pastors. And I get on this fishing trip, and I'm like, Oh my God, like these are my people. <laughs> these are my people. So we did what every cheesy group of guys that hit it off does. We created a text group. And there's 12 of us in a text group and we text every single day. Cheesy, silly stuff, weird stuff. But it, we can be ourselves. We can be ourselves. We can be pastors, but we can be normal guys. And if one of us goes out and hunts and shoots something, we're going to take a picture and put it. You don't ever, I don't really get the opportunity to put gory, bloody hunting pictures on my Facebook. It just doesn't really fit like the church world really. But these guys love it. <laughs> now listen, listen, what I'm saying is this, what I'm saying is this. I want to create environments for men and women and teenagers and children in our church to connect with others with, who are like-minded, like-minded people. Why? Because we were designed to connect. We were designed to interlock our faith with others, and not just in a spiritual setting like church, but at home. Man, some of you throw some great barbecues. Invite somebody over. God, hey, potato salad, baked beans, corn on God did not create man because he was lonely. We have to understand that God is self-sufficient. God created man so that he could share the enjoyment of what community brings. Now, for some people who have worked really hard to make friends, I get you. I get you. I understand you. You can talk to any of my staff. They've seen me in staff meetings weeping, weeping, because I traveled across the country to go meet with some guys, and by two hours in, I was back in my hotel room all by myself because I didn't belong. I know. I know the person who finds it very hard to make friends. I know, you see who I am right here? I'm actually an introvert. This takes a lot for me to be this guy. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to the introvert. Now, the extrovert, we're all like, yeah, it's easy for the extroverts to make friends. Extroverts are fake. <laughs> they all fake. They all outgoing and they say anything that they want that person to hear so they can make a friend and make a sale. They ain't fake. <laughs> Introverts are the real people. They're the real ones. But I'll tell you this, 
The Bible says, the Bible says that if a person desires to have friends, they must first show themselves friendly, right? So, a couple things. Take the stank look off your face. <laughs> Take the stank look off your face. Don't go somewhere. No one's talking to you. No one's talking to your stank. Seriously. No one's talking to you when you're unapproachable. Take your AirPods out your ears. No one's talking to you. No one's talking to you with your AirPods in your face. No one's talking to you with your face in your phone. And no one's talking to you with stank on your face. When you walk into a room, posture yourself. Put your chest out. Put a smile on your face. Get your head up and make eye contact. I promise you, someone will connect with you. Now, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of of work. For introverts, it's exhausting. So here, if you want to know if you're an introvert or an extrovert, are you exhausted by people or are you energized by people? Pastor John Mark, he is all extrovert, right? So I take John Mark with me as many places as I can go so I can hide behind him. <laughs> he is like, yo, I'm at so-so and I'm at so-so and I'm at so-so. I'm like, bro, I'm tired. Let's go back to the hotel. What refuels you? Being alone and reading, does that fuel you? Or being in a group of people, does that fuel you? Whatever it is that fuels you will tell you whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. And then based upon the degree of it will tell you how far each way you are. Okay, just trying to help somebody out. In this series, in a few weeks, we're actually going to have a panel of people, a couple couches full of people with different personalities. And we're going to talk about what it's like based on different personalities, different genders, making friends. I think it's a little bit harder for females to make friends than men. I think men, now when I say friends, hear me out. A popularity club. I think it's harder for females on a side that I think they always have like this lack of trust of other women. I think men could kind of just go and like hang out with guys, have a soda, be bound on a bonfire, shoot some guns, and we can get along for the night. I think women can get like, did you see the dress she had on? <laughs> Those shoes didn't match her handbag. <laughs> But then, but then on the deeper side of making like deep friend connections, I think guys, there's a wall. I think that guys get to a certain spot like, all right, that's as far as this guy's getting in my life. We can hang out and chill. We can go to the movies, but that's it. I'm not, I ain't telling him nothing. And I think when a, when a female makes a best friend, it's for life. It's for life. That's my ride or die. That's my... I'm just throwing it out. I'm just, I don't know. We're going to talk about it because I only know me. God created you because he wanted to increase, his lo increase love. He created you because he wanted to increase joy. He created you because he wanted to increase fellowship and show you what community is. So I'm going to ask you today, are you willing to connect with others? Because we've got to connect with others. We've got to connect with God and we've got to connect with others. This is how we're going to have healthy and fulfilled lives. But why do, why do people not do it? One, there's a fear of intimacy. There's a fear of intimacy. If they really know me, will they love me? If they really know what I've been through, they really know what I think about, they really know who I am, do they want to be around me? Second reason why a lot of us don't connect is we're selfish. We're selfish. We don't actually think of others. We don't think of including somebody else. I mean, listen, honestly, if you're going to take your kids to go to the park and swing on the swings, why couldn't you call four of your friends who've got kids and say, hey, I'm going to the park. Want to bring your kids? Why couldn't you do that? Well, because I was just going to go by myself with my kids. That's great. But listen, your kids aren't that into you. Your kids would l much rather 
go down a slide with another kid their age, then have mom sitting there, and listen, and you're going to be like this anyway. Yeah, Johnny, go ahead, Johnny. Swing, Johnny. Call somebody, hey, taking my kids to the park, want to go? And I think part of us then too, like, fears the rejection. Nah, I'm busy. Well, I'm never going to call them again. Just be the person. Be the inviter. Be the catalyst. Don't be selfish. Some people don't make friends because they got poor health. Poor health. I don't want to go do nothing. I don't want to get out. I'm tired. Work a whole day. Be around people. I'm tired. I don't want to do nothing. Man, guys, we got to get healthy. We got to get energized. I, I get it. I get it that you worked a long eight-hour day. But, man, put some time into, like, talk to somebody. I mean, call someone on the drive home. Connect with somebody. Come on. We got to get healthy. Here at Family Church, we want you to connect more than just attending a Sunday service. We want to connect you to the women's conference. Come out to the women's conference. Get, get, get involved in that. Help with one of the teams. Maybe you're a decorator or you're a planner or you love setting up food tables. Get connected with the team. Come out to the event. Connect with other women. Listen, I don't want to hear, I can't make any friends. I'm so And you don't go to nothing. Men, my personal invite to you. I've walked the hall. I've walked these halls and connect with as many men as I can every week and personally invite them to the men's event. I can't sign you up, but come out June 10th. Let's hang out. I got a company coming in. They're bringing 50 compound bows, 50 crossbows, 50 tomahawks. We're doing a bonfire. Like, this ain't some cheesy thing where, like, you're shooting my bow. Like, this is a legit event. It's a legit event. Uh, June 10th, it's a Friday night, man. It's going to start at 6.30, but we're going to be there probably till 1, 2 in the morning hanging out. You don't have to stay that long. You don't have to stay that long. If you're in bed by 7.30, that's okay. <laughs> My six-year-old does that, but hey, that's okay. Come out. Connect with some brothers. Get plugged into a connect group. Well, I looked at the connect groups. There's nothing that I like. So start one. Start a connect group with what you do with your hobby. Start a book club. Connect with some people. Use the church's resources to do that. If all that's too much, I really don't want anybody in my personal time. Join a serving team. Help out on Sundays. Help out for one hour on a Sunday. When you join a serving team, that is how you are known by the church and cared for. There's no other way that we could know you or care for you except if you connect with a team. There's just no way. As the church grows and it gets bigger, we can't not, I mean, we don't go through the database and say, Holy Spirit, who needs a call today? We don't. We think back of our week and say, hey, I didn't see so-and-so on my team. So-and-so keeps calling out. Let me call them. Let me find out what's going on. There's got to be a way that we can do this. So join a team. Care for others around you. Don't make the Sunday experience just about you. Don't be a consumer of the gospel and not a contributor. Don't be a consumer and not a contributor. Give back to the kingdom of God of what God's put in you. But none of this works unless you're first connected with God. I'm telling you, there's not joy, there's not peace, there's not patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control without being connected to the Father. We got to get connected to God. And we get connected to God by giving Him our life, by, by giving Him our heart, by faith, by faith. Not only am I going to connect with the guy next to me, but I'm going to connect with God. And we do that through a prayer. We ask him to come into our life, change us, save us. And here at Family Church, we pray a prayer, and we all do it together so that it's not weird and uncomfortable, and that prayer goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen or click the hands up or fill out the connect card so that one of our online hosts could connect with you and send you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? I promise I won't embarrass you. But would you just wave at me and say, Pastor Mike, I prayed that for the first time today. Anybody at all as I look across the room real quick? Anybody? Over here, yeah, man, I see you. Awesome. Anybody else real quick? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise God, man. We have that same book available to you, one of our ushers or our care team members. If you need prayer for any reason today, we will have care team members in the front and in the back. Uh, if there's something that you're going through in your life, you saw that video. We have a great Thursday night program called Celebrate Recovery. It's probably the best weekly Bible study and discipleship program that we have going on in the church. It's consistent. It's every single Thursday night. It will help you grow and change your life. Amen. Let me bless you. Father, we thank you for lives changed, transformed. Lord, we pray for doors of opportunity to make friends. Those who are genuine, real, true friends. Show us the benefits of having friends. Help us to be friendly. We thank you, Lord. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel, and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.